shocking plans have been announced. It seems that there is a decision between the four RIRs covering Europe and the Middle East, Asia Pacific, North America and South America to exclude Africa from the decision-making process of the Internet's Global Coordinating Body, Number Resource Organization, NRO. If you're an African, who cares about his internet governance rights? This video is crucial for you as it contains information about threats to your internet governance rights. Let me tell you what happened. On 21st March 2023, the NRO Executive Council had a meeting with all representatives from the four RIRs, excluding any representative from AFRINIC, the RIR for Africa. In this meeting, John Curran, chair of NRO's executive council and representative of North America's RIR, Arin, said that the legal team has sent a memo that states the following. NRO's executive council can lead NRO even without a member from each RIR. Afridic is the only RIR that doesn't have a representative in NRO's executive council at the moment. Mr. Curran further explained, this means that other items on this agenda are now able to be executed on. All the other representatives agreed with John Curran's statement, with Remco Van Moog, the representative of RIPENCC, commenting that it's very useful to have this clarified position before people start challenging us and doing anything in public. Well, needless to say that this legal memo is threatening to Afrinic's role in the global internet governance process and to Africans' internet governance rights. Moreover, the timing of this legal memo is very suspicious and raises lots of questions. Why did NRO legal team choose this time specifically to issue this memo? Could it be that the other four RIRs are trying to get rid of Afrinic and Africans in NRO? If that is so, why? Is it because we Africans are different in color and appearance? That being an obvious outsider? Or is excluding Afrinic from NRO coming in to the benefit of certain people in NRO Executive Council? This legal memo being issued refreshes our memories and takes us back to all the times that NRO engaged with Afrinic's ex-management in potentially problematic internet governance practices. Practices that included encouraging ex-suspended CEO Edi Kaihura's illegal attempt to terminate hundreds of millions of end users or supporting Afrinic's ex-board of directors' attempt to rig the election, which eventually got suspended by the court. Last but not least, going against an order from the Supreme Court of Mauritius asking immunity for Afrinic's ex-management. I can't help but think, is this NRO's plan from the beginning to bring Afrinic to dust so it can use it as an excuse to exclude it from NRO and the entire global internet governance scene? Now that they have the legal confirmation to do so, what does that mean for Afrinic and for Africans' internet governance rights? Moreover, shouldn't NRO have had pointed out Afrinic's ex-management problematic governance practices to the community first instead of enabling those practices? A while ago, a community member, Andrew Alston, raised the question to Paul Wilson, the CEO of APNIC, and then NRO Executive Council member blog, asking him, why are you enabling AFRINIC's ex-management bad behavior? As expected, the answer from Paul's side is yet to come. To answer the question of why is NRO engaging in potentially bad internet governance practices, we have to ask ourselves, who is benefiting from this? It is a universally known truth that whenever there is uncertainty, the people who gain the most from it are the same opportunistic people who are controlling and planning everything. Is it possible that NRO participated and encouraged bad internet governance practices done by Afrinic 
ex-management to get rid of Afrinic and Africa once and for all. Is this all planned from the beginning to reach where we are now? Is it all just a plan to take Africans' internet governance rights away? Moreover, what is the next step of this plan? A father depreciating to Afrinic? Taking away Afrinic's credentials, which Africans have fought for so hard for two decades? Will NRO executive council members keep looking for an excuse to banish Afrinic and Africans? All RIRs are established on a bottom-up principle, yet when it comes to Afrinic, they seem to keep embracing a top-down approach, requesting immunity from the government of Mauritius for Afrinic's ex-management as a means to avoid community scrutiny. Why does NRO want to stop the community-based, bottom-up, self-healing process to let the community and rule of law to bring back Afrinic from bad governance? Why did they choose to go another way by encouraging the top-down approach engaged by Afrinic's ex-management? The four RIR combined have hundreds of millions of dollars in budgets, having some of the best law firms in the world working for them. In fact, <laughs> NRO's legal fee alone amounts to millions of dollars each year. Didn't NRO know the consequences of enabling bad governance? Didn't they know that breaking the rule of law will eventually destroy the organization? I honestly find this hard to believe. However, if NRO knew the consequences, why is it still encouraging the bad internet governance practices done by Afrinic's ex-management? I don't have a definitive answer to this question. We at NRS take at heart the importance of voices and rights of the most vulnerable. And by spreading awareness on this matter, we can all join hands together and take action. NRS, internet is for everyone, not just for those few elites.